This is John Steele. This week, my files are open to the letter H for Harris. Kurt Harris. It's a story about a room with no windows that trapped a man with no heart. I like to call it Counterpoint. How can you tell the exact minute when an important change started to take place? I guess it's almost impossible. You know what you are today, and you recognize dimly some of the influences that have made you what you are. But it's hard to sit down and say, that influence started when I was six and a half years old. Or I got that idea at five minutes after twelve, on Washington's birthday, 1922. Their roots, all right, but roots without an oil. No, 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 no. Well, maybe no, better... Hold it, Kurt. Hold it, will you? Hold it. Now what? What's the matter with you, buddy? You're not thinking. What do you mean? This guy's a killer. You're playing him like something from color. Well, it's the lines, no, Bill. It I can't do anything with these lines. Why not? Well, it takes too long to get into it. The line about washing his birthday, it's all right, but there's nothing but garbage above that. What do you mean? Well, it's up about the exact minute when an important change started to take place. What's the matter with you? It's too silly. Not the way this guy would talk. All right, what did you say? I don't know. I'm an actor, not a writer. All right, how would you say? I don't know. Something like, uh, it's, it's hard. Like trying to put your finger on the day you started liking vanilla ice cream. You look back over your life and, I don't know, I'm an actor. Yeah, that's good. Uh, cut the first four and a half lines down. It was hard to say. Then cut down to, I got that idea. Yeah, will I write it? All right. right. I want more of her stuff, Ronnie. I want these footsteps to sneak in under the end of an aeration. Right, Phil. Right, said Kurt. Crying out loud. What's the matter? Nothing. I only got a half hour with me in yeah, the air. I know, I know. What's the matter with you? Nothing, I said. You're the director. If you don't like what I'm doing, go ahead. Direct. Now, look, we got to work together, buddy. What's the matter? I guess I'm nervous. I did two soaps this morning, television rehearsal all afternoon. I guess I'm just nervous. I don't take it so seriously. Nobody will listen to anyway. All right, let's go from the top. It's hard. Like trying to put your finger on the day you started liking vanilla ice cream. You look back over your life, and it's hard to say, I got that idea five minutes after 12. I watched his first day in 1922. Their roots all right, but roots without an end, or maybe better without a beginning. They're the things that attach oh, you to no, the... No, 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 no. Hold up, hold up, Kurt. Hold it, will you? Are you in a hurry? You don't know much too fast. Uh, let's get the guy set, then we'll have him for keeps. Twenty-five minutes to last time, Bill. I know. We haven't even run this thing down yet, and I got I know, it. I, I know, I know. Okay, you're the boss. Now, look, if you're psychopathic killer, and we don't want a typical end of an aeration, otherwise, do you think we'll be lost? Yeah, I know, but... I want that subtle dislocation, the shadowy suppressed fire. You know the character. You paid him probably a dozen times. Yeah, I know, I know. Nothing shocking about it, normalcy, unless you've got something to compare it with. It's the fact that it's abnormal that makes it interesting. I know. Okay, well, we've got it back. You gotta think he's just a guy when he says, sure. You got it? Yes. Okay. Take it from, uh, Earth of your substance. They're the things that attach you to the Earth of your substance. They're there, and that's all you have to know. I guess it was that way with Marion. We'd been married for five years, and I can't remember when the idea first occurred to me. Maybe even before we were married, but that's not important. I just looked at it one day, and I knew I was going to... Go on, go on. I, I can't. Why? Boy, it's, it's phony. Why? Because I don't believe it. I don't think a guy like this would even admit it to himself. He's psycho. Why wouldn't he? Because that's what's been wrong with him all his life. Afraid to face the facts. Facts about himself, about his wife, about life. He's been hiding behind every door he could find. Why would he suddenly say to himself, I'm going to kill her? All right, look, we haven't got time to argue. Maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. I don't know. But if it makes good drama, what difference does it make? I'm sick of playing this kind of trash, that's what. Sensational and inaccurate bill just toss up in the name of entertainment. It ought to be stopped. You wrote this thing. Why didn't you give it some thought instead of Take just wanting down it. the first thing that entered your head? Holy radio. It ought to be stopped. You're all through? Yeah. Let's go back to just look better one day.
I just looked at her one day and knew I was going to kill her. It was spring, and I spent the afternoon sitting in the office, dreaming about fishing. That night when I got home to the apartment, the smell of cooking was heavy in the hall. The place seemed dirtier, noisier, more crowded than usual. Marion was in the kitchen getting supper. That's you, dear? Yeah, uh, yes. Something go wrong with the office? Why? You get home early. No, nothing went wrong at the office. I'm sorry. For what? I didn't mean to cry. You weren't. I just thought that... Please, Marion, you weren't crying. I'm sorry. You'll always be so... So what, dear? Oh, what's the use? So what, dear? Nothing. I said I was sorry. I know. What more can I say? Nothing. Forget it. Where's the paper? I'll get it for you. I didn't ask you to get it. I asked you, where is it? Well, I only thought that... Where is it? In the chair. Argument. All I ever get. I thought that if you would. Couldn't we go just five minutes without an argument? I'm sorry, dear. I'll just get dinner. My mother was here today. Mm. I told him about the sink in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. He said everyone was having trouble first of all. He had this week. He said when the building was built, the plumber did a bad job. He's going to try to make him fix the floor if he needs it. you tell him about the paint in the kitchen? No. Why not? Well, he, he had so much on his you mind. You forgot. No, dear, it wasn't that. It was just... You forgot. Well, he had so much Didn't on his Didn't you? Face. I don't know. Didn't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, there's so much to remember. You forget everything. I'm sorry. Can't remember anything. I'm sorry. Huh? You were staring. Was I? My hair. Was that it? He's married. I had a cut today. Was that it, dear? No. No, that wasn't it. Oh. I can't do it, Bill. I can't. What's the matter? Well, I, I can't do it. What are you talking about? We're just beginning to move. I saw them. Oh. Those guys in the control room laughing. They weren't laughing at you. Well, you can make it work with people laughing at him. Somebody him. pulled a gag in you that time. Well, oh. I can't do it. Well, I just you. can't. Now, look, buddy, we got a show to pour down in 20 minutes. You can't pull temper on me now. I'm sorry. I'm all up in the air. I just can't do it. Settle down, Kurt. I'll come out the station. What's the matter with you? Well, you saw them last. It's happened before. Yeah, I know, well, I know. don't take it so seriously. What's the matter anyway, sir? I don't know. I don't know. Hold yourself, fellow. We got a show to do. Yeah, do. I know. Trying to give me gray hair. I'm sorry, but if you don't settle down, this sponsor will have me in a carpet to man. I'm nervous. Had I been to a sponsor's meeting? No. Want some more to take? Yeah, maybe that. Mike Walker, I know a lion's cage. I'll get it for you. Thanks. When you get through with you, you wish they were lions. Yeah, I know. No law against killing lions. I don't know what's the matter with me. Now, look. Hey, you okay. Right. Put yourself together, will you, buddy? It's not a doe wrapped up in the show. Yes, Ma? No. Did you ever blow up like this before? No. Hey, you want to sit down for a minute? Maybe I'll... Come on, come on. This has just been working too hard. <laughs> Eighteen minutes, Bill. I know, honey, I know. That guy just hadn't laughed. I told you he wasn't laughing well, at what you. One of the guys said he wouldn't blame you for killing her. Okay, Bill. Nobody laughed. Yeah, got a cigarette. Now they're inside. Come on. Right. Well, what's the matter? Well, I'm sorry, Bill. Well, I thought the thing was going good. Why? Don't worry, Kurt. You'll get it. And that old electricity. It did. Frackled all over the place. Don't worry, Kurt. Look, uh, that, that place where she says, what are you looking at? Yeah. Is that the place where he makes up his mind to kill her? Sure. Only this guy's a complete sadist. Well, not complete. Why? Because then he wouldn't have told her he was going to kill her. Well, yeah, I guess so. He's sadist enough. Probably pulled wings off flies when he was a kid. Oh, please, Bill. Oh, you know what I mean... <laughs> Why else would he have told her it wasn't her hair he was staring at? Sure. That's a deliberate slap in the face. He knows his women. Anyway, there's one woman. Isn't she kind of drippy, Bill? Why? I don't think so. Well, most gals would have said so long, brother, to that joke long ago. Ah, but that's the point. She can't, and he knows it. But really? Well, maybe she's an exception, but I've known women like that. Oh, damn. him. Oh, cut it out, will you? You know what I mean. This is a gal who's out of control. She's in a panic. She's losing the love of a man. She knows it. But she doesn't know what to do about it. 
She reached that point. Where everything she does is wrong. Sure, sure. She'd rather hang on and hope and walk out like she ought to. Exactly. Poor girl. And the point is that he knows it better than she does. He's in a spot where she'll take whatever he does. So he just goes on sticking in that old needle after needle. And she can't stop him. Nice guy. Got to convince that their failure is entirely her fault. And the tragedy of the situation, and it's something he probably doesn't even realize, is that it's all his fault. I know a guy like that once. They lock him up? They should have, but they couldn't. Why? We were in sixth grade. That was before I got hit. I'll get her. <laughs> Six, three minutes, Bill. Okay, we're on. We're on a bus, but Okay, I think okay. okay. Feel better, Kurt? What? You feel better? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. All right, let's get back to work, huh? We won't have time to run the whole show down now, so let's jump to the murder scene on page 15. Okay, Roddy? All right, Bill. All right, stop at the, uh, start at the top of the page, right after the music break. Michael. Hmm? Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay, Kurt? Uh, yeah, Bill. All right, let's go from the top. Train first, Roddy. Right, Bill. It was raining the night I made up my mind. We'd had one of our endless arguments, and when I couldn't stand the sight of her anymore, I slammed out of her apartment and left her crying. Out on the street, the rain slanted through the lights and splashed on the puddles on the pavement. I started walking. I didn't know where I was going. I just wanted to be moving. The water felt fresh and clean on my face, and I remember being glad I hadn't worn a hat. Then ahead of me in the blur of the rain, I saw the bright, noisy lights of the movie house shining through the storm. I didn't notice what was playing, just went in and sat in the dark, shivering in her wet clothes. The red exit light glowed in the shadows beside me. That was when I first got the idea. Why not? The manager of the theater had spoken to me on the way in. He'd seen me there often enough. He'd remember me. He'd even commented on the fact that I wasn't wearing a hat. I looked up at the screen. It was a picture I'd seen before. Everything was going my way. All I had to do was get up, sneak out at the exit, be sure to leave it open a crack, go home and kill Marion. And sneak back into the theater through the open exit. I'd have to be sure to speak to the manager at the end of the show. Maybe make a scene and ask for my money back, anything, as long as he'd remember me. It was almost too perfect. The exit door stuck a little when I tried to push it open, but at last it gave and I was out in the rain again. When I got back to the apartment, the lights were out in the living room, and I could hear Marion crying in the bedroom. When I passed the kitchen, I noticed the dishes were still piled in the sink. I wondered if Marion knew how I hated dirty dishes in the sink. <laughs> Marion. Oh, it's bad. You came back. Yes. Oh, darling. Darling, the way you left, I thought... I thought... What? Yeah, I, I thought you weren't coming back. I thought it was the end. Did you? I was so afraid. I thought you wouldn't come back. And if you did. Yes, Mary, and I came back. It was all my fault, dear. Yeah, I know it was. I've been so upset lately. I don't know what I'm doing. I know. Oh, I'll get better, dear. You just wait and see. I've tried so hard. Marion. It'll be just like it was when you first married. I don't think you know how upset I've been. It's too late, I Mary. tried so hard not to show it. I didn't want you to know how afraid I was. Stop it. I was afraid I was losing you, and I didn't know what to do. I love you so much, Stop darling. Stop it, Marion. And now you come back, and I know you love me. You wouldn't have come back if you didn't, would you, darling? I don't understand. You made me whole again, dear. Oh, I was so hard. I've been so sorry for you, but now it'll all be different. Stop it. Stop it. What? You can't go back, Marion. It's too late. I, I don't understand. It's too late. Well, what do you mean, dear? Can't you get anything through that? I, I said I'd work hard. It hasn't been your fault. It's I said too late. I'd... Don't you understand? It's too late. But you came back, darling. Why else would you come back? I if came you didn't back. Oh, no. No. No, don't leave me. You can't leave me. I need you. Oh, please. Please, darling, don't leave me alone. Oh, Marion. <laughs> I won't leave you. What? I've hated you for so long. What? I don't understand. Hated the sight of you. Hated the sound of you. Well, what have I done? Hated everything about you. I love hated you. Hated you. Hated you. Hated you. Why? Because you're weak. Because you're stupid. You're weak and you're stupid and I hate you. Let go. Weak. Darling. Stupid. Hey! Hey! Stop it, Kurt! You're hurting! Stop it, Kurt! Bill! Stop it! Cut it out, Kurt! Cut it out! You can't be jerk. 
How well can you make it seem? Huh? You lost your head? Get him away from me. Now, take it easy, honey. I'll be right out. What do you think you're doing? What, what happened? In this business a long time. I don't understand. I've met a crackpot like you before. Hey, you're hey, hurting me. Hey, hey, look at me. Uh, look at me. Huh? Look at me. Let me have another. Somebody else will play this part. All right, now take it easy. I'm through. Listen to me, Kurt. You all right? Huh? If you think that I'm... Hold off, honey. You all right, Kurt? Jerk. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. What happened? I don't know. He was going fine, and all of a sudden... Well, let him tell me, money. I, I, I don't know. I, I remember I lost my head, I guess. I'll say you did. Bill's lost an actress. Quiet, baby. I get paid to act, not to get wrestled all over the studio by this big ape. Shut up. Don't you tell me to shut up. Don't understand it. I understand, all right. You ought to be locked up instead of walking around the streets like a... Cut it out, you two. Cut it out, I said. Now, look. You've both been in the business long enough. I shouldn't have to tell you we've got a show to do. We don't have much time to do it in either. Now, let's stop this nonsense and get to work. But he's I ain't not... no honey, and he's sorry. Aren't you, Kurt? No, I'm... I'm sorry, but that's dead away. Yeah. Carry him away all right in the bar. All right, now, come on now. Kiss and make up. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, what time is it, Ronnie? Ten minutes, Phil. All right, right. Can we jump to the big thing? Yeah, we'll have to now. Start at the top of page 25 after the music bridge. And Ronnie, yeah? keep these background noises low level. I don't want them to intrude on the scene. Yeah, that's right, Bob. Are you ready, George? Yeah, sure. And play this guy like a real cop now, will you? All right, I got you. All right, let's get to work, kid. Time's to wait. Just keep your distance and get on the air, white guy. Yeah, yeah, I will. You okay, Kirk? Yeah, I'm all right. And I'll take it easy, fella. Yeah, yeah. I know how you feel. Okay, okay, let's go. Top 25, put that first. It was a Monday when they took me down to police headquarters. The way the detective held my arm, I had the feeling thought I was guilty already. They took me to an outer office down a long hall to a back room. It was dark. Whatever light was up. I, I, I can't work over that sound. Bill, now take it down, will you? Hold it, Ronnie, hold it. Say, Kurt? I can't work over that sound. He's right, Ronnie. It's too high. I was going to take the sound out to the door, Kurt. I know, I know, but it's part of the dialogue. Okay, okay. Jerk. What did you say? I said you were a jerk. Hey, fella. You boy ham, what do you think was holding this hey, up? Hey, fella. Man? If you don't know your job, what are you doing? Stop it, both of it. Stop it. Well, forget it, Ronnie. Okay. Let's go back to whatever light. What's that first? Yeah, right, fella. Whatever light was outside was cut off by the building in the back. It was dark. Mr. Narco was waiting to take down the testimony. The red-faced detective flipped on the light and waved at the chair. The light hurt my eyes. All right. Let's start at the beginning, huh, mister? We've been over all this before. Well, we're going to go over it again. Hey, hold it, George. Hold it. Yeah? Oh, cops aren't Irish. Yeah, I know. All right, let's try something else there. Well, it said red face, and I... Think... I know, I know, but let's do something different. Uh, want to play an Italian? Do we have to give him a dialect? Why not just a guy? Make up your mind, will you? Butker? Play him anything, but let's get going. Oh, wait a minute. I, I can't work this way. That's all there is to it. Shut up, Kurt. Well, here it is eight minutes before. Here's shut up. He hasn't even got a character up. set. I hear one more piece of temperament on anyone in this studio. I'm going to... Sorry, Bill. It's okay. Now, look, look, look. Look, take it. It's just a guy. It's a job for him. He does it 365 days a year. Nothing glamorous, but the job. Got a four-room apartment in the Bronx. He rides a subway to work. Has four kids and a tired wife. And this is the way he earns his living. He's not on a crusade. He's not out to clean up the city. Part of his job is helping old ladies cross the street. Part of us holding back crowds with parade. And part of it's talking to criminals. He doesn't know me when he gets through here. He'd have to go pull a cat out of a tree someplace. You got it? Yeah, I think so. Why? Well, uh, Bill, uh, does he think this guy's guilty? You think he cares? Would you care? <laughs> no, I guess not. Okay, play it. All right, let's get back to, uh, we've been over this all before. Yeah, all right, Bill. We've been over this all before. We're going to go over it again. I don't see what good... If you're innocent, you've got nothing to worry about. Now, let's start at the beginning, huh, mister? On the night your wife was murdered, you had to fight it, right? Yes. What was it about? I don't know, nothing important. Husband, wife, stuff. You and your wife have many fights? No. Sure? Yes. 
good friend of yours testified that you and your wife didn't get along so good. We got along fine. Why do you say you didn't? I don't know. You know he said it? That's what I heard. Why do you say it? I don't know. I said that. Don't get excited, Mr. I'm not responsible for what my good friend said. Was he lying? Yes. Why would he lie? I don't know. Was he a good friend of yours? I thought so. You changed your mind? I don't know. Why? Why what? Why did you change your mind? I didn't say I did. You didn't say you didn't? I said I don't know. Why? Why what? Why don't you know? I don't know why. I just don't know. Because he gave some damaging testimony? No. Was that it? No. If he was a good friend, uh, wouldn't he try to help you out? You think so. That's what most good friends do. Yes. Was he a good friend? Yes. I mean, I don't know. What do you mean, mister? I mean, I don't know. Why'd you say yes? I thought he was. But now you don't know. Huh? That's right. Uh, can, can we stop a minute, Bill? Sure, George. Oh, no. There, there's something here I don't understand, uh, Bill. If this cop doesn't think that he's guilty, why, uh, why is he hounding this? Come on, come on. What's well, the technique with the guy, George? The carpenter knows that he hits the nail harder, it goes in faster. This guy knows if he throws the question fast, you come up with some interesting results. Let's go. Okay. Uh, where, where, where do you want to go from? Go back to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to, uh, I thought he was. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go! Go, go on, Kurt. You take the line there. Yeah. Where? It's the third line down there. I, I, I thought he was. I, I, I can't. Come on, come on. Interruptions. I don't even know what I'm doing. That's yeah. a, it's the third line there. Yeah, Kurt, yeah. It's the third yeah. line. Hmm. I, uh, I thought he was. But now you don't know, huh? That's right. Okay, the coroner fixed the time of death to sometime between 8 and 9 o'clock. That's right. And you claim that you were at the Lyric Theater that night. I was there. Anyone see you? You know they did. The manager? Yes. Was he a friend of yours? I know him. Was he a friend of yours? Yes. A good friend? I know him. Was he a good friend? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I mean, I know him. But you don't know if he was a good friend? I don't know. If he was a good friend, you'd expect him to help you out, though, wouldn't you? No. You sure? Well, I... You I, said before that you expect a friend to help you out. Uh, well, yes. Uh, then why wouldn't the manager help you out? Because... He wasn't a friend, wasn't he? No. Then how could he be sure that it was you? He was sure. But he wasn't a friend. You're trying to mix me up. He's seen me before. How many people go in and out of a movie house every day? I don't know. 200, 500, 800 maybe? I don't know. And you expect us to believe that a man would pick you out of 800 people? He saw me. Maybe you weren't even there. I was there. Maybe you were home choking the last drop of life out of the wife that you hated. No. Hated because you never got along with her, huh? That's a lie. Because that was the only way that you could get her out of her. Is that no, right? no, no, no. All right, now, let's get back to this other friend of yours. Was he a good friend of yours? Was he? Was he a good friend of yours? What do you mean you don't know? I mean, I thought he was. You said before he was. Did you say he wasn't? I said I didn't know. But you admitted that this man was at your apartment at least twice a week over a period of two years. Wouldn't that make him a good friend? Please. Wouldn't it? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I mean, I don't know. You mean you don't know that what makes a good friend? Yes. What do you mean, yes? I mean, I don't know. Don't know what? What makes a good friend? Yeah, but you want us to accept the testimony of the theater manager. Yes. And he only saw you a couple of times? Yes, yes. Does that make him a good friend? <laughs> I can't work this man, Bill. What? I can't think. Not a good. He seems working so fast. Oh, he's got a faith. I can't do it. Why? The lies, the lies are all alive. Yeah, of course they are. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Well, you're broken. I get mixed up. Exactly but... the effect we want. I don't even know what I'm saying. Now, believe me, kid. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. It's too late to argue now, baby. You'll make up the trouble. You don't understand, Bill. I'll, I'll, I'll blow up. I don't have to take that chance. Well, I can't. Let's go back to, and he only saw you a couple of times. <clears throat> and he only saw you a couple of times. Uh, does that make him a good friend? No. About the night of the murder. No. He went to the movie. I can't. What picture I was playing? Can't. What picture was playing? Stop it. Do you remember? Stop it. Stop it. Kurt. Stop it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Where are you, Kurt? I'm Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I did it. I killed her. I'm making stuff. I killed her. I killed her. You want to take him to control until he settles down? Good idea. I know, it's all over. Come on, come on. 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 Come on, 
Sorry, it's been such a tough day for you all. I don't understand. Yeah, we couldn't let you in on it or it might not work. What? That was Detective Steele. You mean homicide? The guy with Kurt? Yep. But why would he? I'll explain. Two years ago, Kurt's wife died. Oh, yes, I remember that. Police didn't have anything to go on, but they were suspicious. Of Kurt? Yeah. His alibi was that tight. They couldn't crack it. He's like such a nice guy. Yeah, he is. Lots of ways. Who knows what makes a man do a thing like that? Yeah. Anyway, the detective got the idea that maybe if I wrote a show that was close enough to the actual circumstances... I crashed. Well, he didn't know, but it was worth a try. Play is the thing, huh? Well, the detective reads Shakespeare, too. Okay. Ah, oh, it's tough. Ah, uh, Sorry I let you in for all of this, but... Well, you know I couldn't tell you about it. Well, we understand, though. Hope he didn't hurt you, honey. <laughs> no, I'm all right. I suppose you knew what he was doing. No. Yeah, we'll have to cancel the show. Here's a standby. Good all good paid, of course. Still? Yes, good. You sure? You tell him? They'd have found out sooner or later. Yeah. Okay. Detective will let me. What? We can do the show. Oh, you don't have to do that, Kurt. We I can cancel it. You sure? I'm an actor. Huh. What do you say, Steele? Uh, I don't know. You can sit in the control room till it's over. I don't know. You're a Shakespeare fan. What do you say? I don't suppose a half hour will make much difference. That's my boy. What about the rest of you? It's okay by me. How much time we got? One minute, bro. How do you feel, Kurt? Better. Sure you can do it? Want some water? No. no. Thirty seconds. Sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Good luck, buddy. I don't know the plan. Don't worry. I know the character. It's hard. Like trying to put your finger on the day you started liking vanilla ice cream. You look back over your life and it's hard to say I got that idea five minutes after 12 on Washington's birthday in 1922. Yeah, their roots all right. But roots without an end. And they do better without a beginning. And the things that attach you to the earth, your substance. They're there. <laughs> Title, Counterpoint. Well, friends, if you like Kurt's story, why don't you plan on coming back again next week? I'm going to take you to the snowy forests of Newfoundland, where life, death, and a shadowy future were welded into one in the burning flame of a crashed airline. It's a story I like to call Act of God. In the meantime, remember... Adventure is where you find it. So, until next week, this is John Steele saying goodbye and good hunting. John Steele Adventurer is produced and directed by Robert Monroe and written this week by Elliot Drake. Don Douglas is John Steele and Ross Martin was heard as Kurt. Also in our cast were Lon Clark, Mary Ashworth, and Wendell Holmes. Your announcer has been Ted Melly. Remember next week, Mutual presents Act of God, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele. Adventurer.
This program came from New York. Mutual offers up-to-the-minute news editions in different forms by different commentators for everybody to choose from. Every weekday evening, you can hear Gabriel Heater with colorful and dramatic interpretations of the news as he sees it. Phil Henry, the past master of the concise news capsule. Or Frank Edwards and his thought-provoking analysis. The weekend news information, the famed reporter Cecil Brown brings you his comments on news from home and abroad every Saturday and Sunday evening. Choose your favorite, and you'll always make Mutual your choice for news. Where the announcer says, this is the Mutual Broadcasting System.